Hello, and welcome to the Parent Survival Kit podcast from Surviving to Thriving in Your Household. My name is Gene Schwalen, and next to me, as always, is my beautiful bride, Dr. Sonia Schwalen, expert pediatric psychologist, nationally certified school psychologist. And this is the end of the year when we're recording this podcast. And so we're going to call this the reset button. And uh, this 2020 has been a really um, just eventful year to say the least, right? With all that's going on, everything that's still continue to go on. Uh, we do have a, um, a vaccine now for COVID-19, so that's exciting news. Um, but with all that's going on and the end of the year, I know a lot of us are looking for uh, different types of New Year's resolutions, and we do a lot of reflection that we're gonna talk about today. Uh, but one thing that I wanna talk about is just sometimes we just need a, a reset. Yeah, and so um, I'm glad you brought that up because it's interesting how we apply the reset and the reset concept, and we actually call it the reset button. Um, Gina and I have been really intentional, right? You and I have been really intentional about um, prioritizing and making sure that we establish our priorities and then kind of use that as the framework for everything else we do, right? And so if if our life doesn't match up with what we say are our priorities, then we have to hit the reset button. So that's kind of how we do it on a systemic level in our family. Um, we started doing this because we've been really intentional with our marriage and, and just being and doing everything in like a Christ centered way. That's been really important to us. Um, those are our values and that's our faith. And according to our faith, we prioritize putting God first, and then our marriage, then our family, and then everything else after that. And so the reset button or this concept of hitting reset really comes from biblical principles of being able to forgive and forgive and forgive again, because human nature is such that we repeat the same old patterns every day, all the time, all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, and we actually learned the reset button from um, from a, a, a weekend seminar that we went to called um, uh, Love and Respect with Dr. Emerson. And uh, it just, it really changed a lot of things for us is how to hit that reset button. Um, because to make it in marriage, obviously, there's a lot of forgiveness that has to take place, a lot of resets. And that even goes into parenting our children and really everything that we do. Um, so it's a really great concept we can apply in all areas of our life. You know, before the before we started recording this episode, we were talking, and you had mentioned a lot of things about work life balance, and that's a really popular, you know, saying that goes on, especially more these days than anything else. You know, work life balance, work life balance, and uh, and you made a, a really great point that you know that's really not even accurate. It's really more about prioritizing, as you mentioned. Yeah, and so I mean, I hear that all the time. I mean, we we um, at Next Steps and in the Red Clinic and. We're recruiting, you know, for new therapists and team members to join our to join us. And whenever we interview, for example, um, applicants will come in and they'll ask about work life balance. And I think that's really just code for saying, I don't want to work all the time. <laughs> is it OK if I can do that here or, or what's what is the day to day look like? I mean, there there's a. I don't know, subtle ways of saying what they're yeah, really trying like, to say, right? So it's like saying, can I have some boundaries and can I put other things right. that I love and, you know, as a priority in my life as well? Yes, exactly. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I, I really think it's, it's kind of ill-informed or misleading to say that our life is in balance. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, schools of thought out there that promote balance and, and, balance, right? Like it's just this ultimate achievement to achieve balance in your life. Um, but I really, <laughs> I really think that, and I, and I'll talk to families that I work with all the time and clients that I work with all the time. It's not really about balance. It's about what you prioritize. What do you value? If you truly had balance where you were doing a little bit of everything, the same amount every day for the rest of your life, you wouldn't have anything in your life that you perceived as important or worth waking up for or um, something that you were passionate about or something that you wanted to do good things with in your life, right? So balance isn't really a thing. It's more about priorities. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you when you talk about that also, if you really think about it, you know, you and I these last two weeks, we have been prioritizing, closing out some year-end things that we had to accomplish 
And that required us to prioritize our work really more than anything else. Of course, we have other priorities with our kids and family and marriage and all that too, that we have definitely um, also taken, taken care of. But that meant that we've been getting up at four o'clock in the morning every day for the last couple of weeks, even through the holidays to accomplish this. And it's like ebbs and flows. So sometimes we have things that we have to accomplish. There's things that there's deadlines in, in, in our careers. There's things that come up unexpectedly that we have to, you know, address. And so it's called, you know, prioritizing what's important, communication, and, and, and just really looking at uh, everything in your life and how to balance that in that way. That's, that's exactly right. I mean, that's the day-to-day or the week-to-week prioritizing. And then again, as I mentioned when we first started talking, we also have the overarching priorities, you know, and for us, it's, it's God, marriage, family, and everything else. And if things get way, way out of priority, right? Meaning over several months, you know, there's a pattern of us not adhering to those bigger priorities in that order, then we reevaluate and we will have to hit the reset button. Um, There's also the redo button. So reset, redo, think video games, you know, back in the day when like Nintendo was cool to play, we could just click reset and start the level over, right? Because we made too many mistakes and we didn't want to screw it up. That's what this concept is. The big red button. Yeah. Give me a redo. Yeah. Give me a redo. Exactly. And we do that all the time in our marriage. I mean, I may say something boneheaded and. You may say it. Yeah. I I get, you know, I get that look from my wife and she, she can give me some looks for sure. And. You know, and uh, or she may do the same thing, and she she asked me, you know, quite often. Can, can I, I have, have a redo? redo? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about like reflection, because this year, you know, I think a lot of us need to do kind of a redo. Um, a lot of us have had the opportunity to put family first, kids first, um, but that also came with a lot of extra challenges and stressors and whatnot that we've seen. Um, you know, parents are, are more stressed these days. It seems like um, kids are not exactly the same in a lot of ways. Um, and there's been a lot of stress on marriages as well. We've seen domestic violence skyrocket over the last few months. Um, same child thing abuse. with child abuse and everything else. So uh, let's talk about reflection for this year and what can we do to really hit that reset button. And, and it's, I really love it that we're doing this at this time of the year because we all have things. That, and, and, and I guess in our brains, for me anyway, just a, a lay person and a dad, I just, you know, January 1st, I can say, you know what, I can do this starting tomorrow. I can do this. And it's just that first of the year, it gives me the, the energy and the belief, the hope that we can accomplish whatever we want to accomplish. Right. No, I totally agree. That's the cool thing about the new year is that this is very much a time for many people to have a renewed sense of hope and, and then it energizes them to try to do things differently. Um, so there's many things you can do. And the one thing I want to say, just from the being a psychologist perspective and providing that reassurance out there to parents, is that it is never too late to start hitting the redo button. So you may think like it's hopeless or my kids are used to me being the way I am or the pattern that we have established in our family. It's like a house that doesn't have peace or it's a marriage that's Uh, characterized by conflict and that's all the kids know anyways and they're not going to believe in us when we do start making changes it's easy to say that yeah or you know the families that have dinner in front of the tv every night and all of a sudden we're going to have family dinners at the table and have conversation and your kids are going to probably look at you like yeah right come on are you serious yeah that's pretty funny and there may be some resistance too because the one thing we know about systems is that even if, you know, five out of the six family members are making a a change and they're trying to do things differently, that one family member, and it could be someone different every time, is doing what they can to pull back to the status quo. That's just what systems do. So if there's a certain pattern that has been established in the family, a certain way of relating, a certain way of maybe being more reactive versus proactive or whatever it may be, Trust me when I say it's going to feel like somebody, even if it's not the same person every time, is trying to pull things back to the way you're used to doing things. That's just the comfort zone that people get into. And so that redo button, okay, we're all trying to make this change. We're all in this together. But the only way that change can truly happen is if we go at it with the mindset of we are willing to accept that we're all going to make mistakes a bunch of times throughout this process. 
We're going to repeat that mistake over and over again because we are creatures of habit. It's not going to be perfect. But we're willing to forgive and move on when it does happen. That's really the only way change in family can happen. Yeah, and as a coach, you know, you say you talk about forgive and move on, and that's definitely uh, a very crucial, uh, you know, part of that. But another thing I like to talk about from a coaching standpoint is it's also really cool if you can get everyone to kind of buy in a little bit and just kind of uh, lift each other up at different times and, you know, have that team, you know, that team concept, that morale, that camaraderie and say, you know, know what, I got you. It's okay. Let's go. We can do this again. Um, that also helps and makes a big difference as well. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to do because in families, you know, everybody's so close and we love each other and we get our sense of, um, maybe importance or even self-worth or whatever it may be from people in our family. Um, and so it's really hard not to take it personally, right? When somebody makes that same mistake and they do that same old thing that they always do and they don't care that it affects me or that I find it disrespectful or whatever it may be. And so that go-to is, oh, here we go again. Like, why can't you just respect me? Or why don't you just love me, right? With that love and respect stuff. And, um, in those moments is when you have to recognize that in yourself of, okay, I can't take this personally. We're all in this together. We're all trying to make these changes. Instead, it's, hey, remember we talked about this? We were going to work on it. You want a redo? I need a redo. Okay. <laughs> can I hit that reset button? Yeah. And you can find reset buttons on Amazon too and, and make it a, a fun <laughs> game as well. You know, so it's, that's really important. So the reflection part is going to be very key to really figure out really what do you want to change for yourself? And also, what would you like to see changed in your family uh, and in the family dynamics and, and whatnot? Um, because as you mentioned earlier, it's, it's that comfort zone that we're all in and it's hard to get out of that comfort zone. But with the first of the year coming up, uh, you know, that's the that's the, the reset button that we all need in different ways. Uh, and it can be hard, too, because we're all used to doing the things that, that we're used to doing. Um, you know, we may have our, the, the, one of our kids that is used to isolating in the bedroom with, with video games or TV or whatnot, and it's going to be very hard to get them out of that. Uh, and it makes me think of, um, of last year, uh, the last two years actually, but um, our church did 21 days of prayer starting January 1st uh, for 21 days, and it, it was really, really powerful. And the key behind 21 is... Well, usually they say it takes 21 days to form a habit. Correct. I don't really know that there's research behind that anymore, but that used to be what people thought. <laughs> but if you, it, it takes 21 days to change a habit. Right. <laughs> and three days to break one. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, the point is our church was doing 21 nights of worship. I think they did it two nights in a row or two years in a row, actually. Yep. And uh, I think the point of that was to make make habits, right? New habits for people in the new year. Um, so three weeks, right? Three weeks to form a habit, three days to break one. Is that what you said? Yeah. Um, so the rule of three, I guess. Now works. the the tip I can give for how, you know, reflection. When we look back, right, hindsight is twenty twenty. So it's very easy to reflect on twenty twenty. <laughs> See what I did there? Hindsight for hindsight is twenty twenty in twenty twenty. Um, She's got a PhD. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just one of those. That's days the only numbers today. that she knows. Is hindsight twenty twenty and it's two thousand twenty. I promise. I'm really proud of that's myself three plus for that two. one. It's not twenty. Don't edit that one out. <laughs> Anyways, so hindsight is twenty twenty and twenty twenty, right? And it's going to be really easy for a lot of us to look back and see everything that went wrong. Okay, so what I want to encourage is that we make two lists of reflections and we also open this discussion up to the entire family. So maybe you have it, you make your own list, you make your family members make their own list. Maybe you all come together after that and discuss, you know, find the commonalities, find what's unique from someone's perspective in the family and just talk about it. It's kind of a cool way to spend the weekend. It's like goal setting we talked about last week. Right. It know? just fits perfectly. Absolutely. So so make sure there's two different lists, you know, kind of what went really well this year and what could we have done without, right? And then after you do that, don't overwhelm yourself with all the things that you want to change or reset. I would say go ahead and just start with one thing at a time, okay? Because the good news is 
we got the whole year ahead of us to reset on different parts of the things we want to change. If we try to do too much at once, we're setting ourselves up for failing. Yeah, and it is very important to look at, you know, all the positive things that did happen because otherwise we're not going to be able to get out of the rut that we've been in. And, uh, and I've been talking about that for a while now. There's, there's so much good that happened in 2020 because of COVID. If you just look at the uh, the world and the earth itself and how it's kind of repaired itself over the last few months with less pollution and whatnot, um, God has his ways of doing things in his, in his own way that we just don't understand sometimes. And, and it's really, really cool. So there's a lot of good things we can actually look at. And we, when we look at ourselves as far as taking away or, or looking at things we want to change, um, that could also be, you know, something that we want to, you know, take off our plate that we talk about quite a bit. It's one of my favorite things. It's not talking about our New Year's resolutions. We want to add uh, to the game for 2021, but what we can, what can we take off our plate for 2021 as well? And one thing that we talked about in 21 Nights of Prayer is replacing that time. So kind of like fasting. Um, so whatever we take off our plate or things we want to change, replace it with something else. Um, I, I like to get on my phone every now and then uh, throughout the day several times and play a game for three or four minutes uh, just to escape whatever I'm doing uh, throughout the day. Um, and so what I found myself replacing that with is getting out my Bible app. So whatever it is that you enjoy doing, you can do different things. You can find positive things you can add. There's there's all kinds of apps out there to, you know, audible books, um, uh, things that are educational, motivational, things like that that you can really uh, pour into yourself. So pouring positive things in as you're trying to change some things could also be a very big plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And then when you apply the reset or the redo button to family life, right, you can just make that kind of a theme for 2021 um, that we know that we're all going to fall back into old patterns. That's just a given. What is something that, you know, each family member is going to work on? So, for example, you know, a child that isolates in his room because he's playing video games. Um, if you notice that your child is not around, <laughs> right? Uh, everyone needs to be intentional about helping that family member make that change. So, hey, you're doing it again. You're in your room. Remember, we talked about it. Why don't you come back downstairs? Um, and not just letting it be something you ignore or get too busy to deal with. Okay. And again, if you do, it's okay. But tomorrow is another day. Just hit the reset button and start over. Absolutely. And to have a reset button, there's got to be somebody else that you're doing this with. So, we can all be accountability partners to each other in that same sense. Um, and teaching kids the reset button is really awesome because they learn how to forgive easier and easier. It's easy for them to understand, okay, yeah, I will redo, cool, let's do that. Um, and it can be fun also, but also be serious and something that they actually learn from and grow in. Well, and it te it's like, it's taking parenting to the next level, right? Because what you're doing then is you're finding just regular day-to-day -day interactions and turning them into like beautiful parenting moments. So if, you're, if your children are fighting with each other, you can go in and say, hey, do we need to hit the reset button? Let's actually redo, okay? So you snatched that toy out of little sister's hand. If we were going to redo that, what could you have done differently? And then you give them a redo and you watch as one sibling goes over to the other and asks if they could play with that toy instead of just snatching it. And in that moment, you can say, that was awesome. You hit the redo button. You, you cleaned up your act right away. You used your words, good manners. I'm so proud of you. And now your child is getting positive feedback and they're learning in that moment, first, how to do a redo, but second, how to get your approval, which ultimately is what keeps kids motivated and what sends them the message that they are worthy of love, affection, and they're good people. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we all want to please each other. And, and, you know, husbands want to please their wives, wives want to please their husbands. At least they did in the very beginning. Um, so maybe that reset button is needed for just that in itself. And then kids want to please parents also. Um, so if you have that teenager that wants to smart off or this ain't fair and Johnny gets to do this and Susie gets to do this and whatnot, um, you, again, as you just mentioned, well, we can give you a redo. Would you like to rephrase that and then come to us in a different approach? Yeah. And I mean, this really only works if the whole family is in agreement. You start off the year in discussion that this is kind of what we're going to be doing going forward. And it's going to be our goal to give each other redos. And so, you know, kids can even ask their parents to do a redo. <laughs> um, but you have to really kind of gauge if you're okay with that, if it's appropriate. 
But with teenagers, it can be very effective where a teenager might say, hey, mom, like that kind of came off as judgy or that's exactly what you do. That makes me not want to talk to you. Like, could you redo or hit the reset and try again? And it's almost like your teen is teaching you how to parent them a little bit better. Yeah, that's also a very big plus. So when kids see us willing to make changes as well and, and to grow in different areas, it's a game It's a game changer for kids. It so. totally is. We got to model it if we want them doing it too. All right, Dr. Schwedin. Well, thank you so much for this uh, great podcast today. The reset button, get it on Amazon. Uh, have fun <laughs> with it. As you plan your goals for the new year, get with your kids and talk about some things you want to change. Let's have fun for 2021 and make it the very best. We'll talk to you uh, next week.